Well, since they mentioned my name so many times, I must come in. This is Nikolai. I do have a message for you. There are those out there that are working with man-made vortexes and black holes. <clears throat> Be very careful. These are very dangerous things to be working with. I know I worked with them myself when I was alive. But they do not use exactly the same energy as natural vortexes. So they can cause a rip in the time fabric. Believe it or not, that is a thing. So natural vortexes work with the fabric of time. However, with these man-made vortexes and black holes, they do damage the fabric of time, if not rip it. And when you do such a thing, it cannot be repaired within a billion years. So it's not a natural fix. And that rip in time will eventually get larger and larger and include many solar systems or whatever. But God can fix it, of course. But at this point, it is not for man to use these man-made vortexes and black holes. It, they will find that they will damage their own physiology. Their own selves will be damaged if they start working with these different um, energies because they are not natural to how a black hole or a vortex is formed. They use their own creative energies and... Uh, synthetic ways to build them. Their uh, thought processes are very valid in creating them, of course. They can be used in other ways. So I, I was uh, experimenting with these kinds of things when I was alive, and of course the government is now taking all my research material and is using it for, a diff for these different things, and I was wrong to want to use this kind of energy for that uh, idea. So um, I'm just setting out the warning for those of you who are working with this kind of artificial black holes and vortexes because they are not natural to the solar system or to the, the world in which you are uh, bringing them into. And so they will, they will only damage the the fabric of time and fabric of existence and will also cause damage to your physiology because it, there are certain parts of the body that are attuned to vortexes and excited by wormholes and things of this nature and they will be damaged so please be careful if you're using a barrier that is good however these rips in the fabric of time do not heal quickly. Do not heal quickly. Is there any questions about that? Yeah, I, I just want to quickly ask, um, is this something humans are now working upon? Is yes. this a technology? I was experimenting with things of this nature in my day and age, and the all my experimental information and algorithms and etc. formulas have been taken by the government and they are putting yeah. some of these things into use but yeah. I am here to warn them that it is not a good idea they have not been fully successful with some of these ideas because they are not they do not have the right what sh how should I say energy source but when they find that source which does exist in the earthly plane, they, I, I, I am very um, fearful that they will damage the Earth and the time frame, the time fabric around the Earth, and that will not be good because this timeline must can continue to exist, and that would put a real danger for the timeline because the Is Earth could be destroyed by these artificial black holes and vortexes. Are, are these, these um, black holes and vortexes you talk about, uh, are they the product of, let's say, um, 
and we have a, a, a super collider in CERN. There's yeah, an even bigger collider. one that's being designed in China right now, and yes. it's not the first Fortunately. time I've actually had a warning about this. Um, Fortunately, they're they are self-contained, and they can only and they will not. They are not at the highest strength, so they can if they are self-contained in the contained in the colliders. Yes, it will damage that energy and that atmosphere within the colliders, and they will they will have to put them into a. It will destroy their usefulness eventually. So, but that is why they're building another one. They're finding that the atmosphere within the old collider is changing. So, this is very important that they stay self-contained. It is not powerful enough to break through. However, yeah, yeah. once it once it uses all the energy within the collider, then the collider is no longer useful and must be uh, somewhere, another collider built. Oh, that's interesting. I've not heard the information on that before. That That's quite interesting because I know they're very complicated machines. It's not something They that's... are, and fortunately, they are self-contained. However, if yeah. they build a collider and it, and it escapes, it will not be good. Mm -hmm. So it's the containment, containment issues that there. Right. Yes. Um, I, mean, I, wish, I, I know we want to expand our, our science and we want to expand our knowledge of science. But do you sometimes feel that we get too complicated with how, you know, with our electronics, with our computers, we actually well, lose the sure. simplicity of, of the, the geometry of, of, of the universe, which can bring us so much more? With, with alien help, you are beyond your understanding of some uh, parts of this development. Do you understand that? Yeah, yeah, totally. And so the collider in in France and Switzerland and wherever all it is under there is still useful at this time, but it will become unuseful eventually. So therefore, uh, another collider is being built. Yes, in China. Yeah, yeah. This the. the but I understand what you're saying, and yes, the yeah. energies that are being used have been created for this particular process. Mm -hmm. It is okay. not natural. You see, the natural process cannot be duplicated on your planet because it, it demands such concentration of chemicals and things un, that you cannot duplicate on your planet billions of tons of pressure, trillions of tons of pressure, do you understand? C uh, collapsed stars uh, create these things naturally, but you cannot create a collapsed star in your collider. Right, okay. Yeah. It is a natural thing. It is a natural thing. It is not something that you can actually create. They think that they have done so in some ways, created some natural portions to it, but yet they have to add the artificial there to bring it to fruition, and it's not, it's not, it then becomes unnatural, and that is uh -huh. the day. Okay. Um, does anyone have any more questions? Because I do yeah. have a couple of questions. <laughs> yes, uh, Tasha has a question. Yes, she asks, Tasha. She asks when, when will they allow us free energy so we won't have a power bill? They don't allow free energy because that's not economical. <laughs> it is for you, but not for the world. You see, your, your planet is in a financial problem at this time, and they are trying to keep afloat and keep the monies flowing so that the economy does not collapse. If they were to give you this free access to the energies, then that would be one less brick that they can use to hold the economy up because they make quite a lot of money on uh, you paying for your energy. Now, it will come a time when your economy will implode and that is not far away. 
it looks as if China and Greece are on the precipice of falling apart at this time. By the end of the year, they might just do so. And also, that would affect the United States a great deal, of course. At this point, there is a 90 to 91 percent chance that China may implode and that gr if Greece does at the same time, that will cause a very huge world problem and the United States would have a 58 or 59 percent chance of imploding as well. That is very high if you want to think about it. So do you think these changes will actually help bring along the free energy options because... Eventually. Of course your planet will have to change. Yeah. You'll, yeah. You will have to change your thoughts, processes, and the way that you do things because the way you do things now is archaic. It started many thousands of years ago with one plan and it really hasn't changed that much. You're still using the same uh, processes to do your business as you did 2,000 years ago in some ways. Do you understand? Yeah, and the... so this is antiquated and you must update. But to do so, at this point, you must be torn down and rebuilt. Yeah, and that is it's, what it's, it's the like implosion the house will cause. It's like the Pardon House me? of Cards. The electricity companies, the power companies, they everything hold will have to every be single card at the bottom. You take all that out, everything can fall down. Um, we, don't want we don't want chaos. last thing we want on this planet is chaos. We want harmony. Don't worry. So, don't worry. Let me tell you why. Because there are those that are already planning for the new regime. For mm -hmm. the new takeover, I'm not sure that I like some of the, those that are planning for it but they are there. They are there to help. The aliens are there to help. I am in spirit. I'm not helping, but I can see what is happening. And um, I do not wish to reincarnate at this time. <laughs> so I, I, took, I took over the question. Sorry, guys. I'm... That's okay. Nikolai, I would like yes. to ask if you are familiar with the Keshe Foundation. I am familiar, but not so familiar that I can tell you all about it. It's to the do with plasma, is, it's plasma I, physics. I don't pay too much attention to these establishments because I think that their basis is in the wrong I intent. Do you understand what I'm saying? What was your, um, just to follow that question up, because I'm interested in it again, um, what was your... Um, understanding and comprehension of plasma physics. Plasma physics is very interesting, very viable, and it is more natural than some of the means by which they are doing things now. Plasma has many different effects in third dimension, different than they have in other dimensions. Plasma can be a creative force. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Yes. So when working with plasma, you have to deal with it as it is an organic matter and that it is alive in many senses. But yet, it is not sentient yet. But that is one thing about plasma. It can become sentient. Uh-huh. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. I have another question from the chat. It's uh, Will. And he would like to ask, how can we, as individuals, reposition ourselves to better handle the financial transition? Not depend on your financial systems as much as you do. You see, when you have credit, when you have, uh, when you are depending on other outside forces other than your own, that it makes it very difficult for you to survive once they disappear. So therefore, you see money will be of little interest in the future. So therefore, there are certain things that will be of interest. Now, gold will still be viable in the future. Why? Because you do not even realize all the different properties of gold that are not being utilized by your planet. Gold is, is the 
original color of creation in many ways and there is some properties of gold that alchemy, remember alchemy, people trying to turn one thing into gold, another thing into gold, there was reasons for this and it wasn't just because gold was valuable, although it was, but they ha it ha has other properties that help in science. But you have to discover what they are. I can't tell you. Thank it's you. Actually, uh, uh, gold is actually sort of magic in some ways. Yeah, gold didn't come from this planet. Gold was somehow. Do you have a question in your room? Yeah. Yeah. Do, if there's he a question in the room, that. could it be repeated so people yes, on YouTube can hear? Please. That, please. I heard that gold was given to us by another planet, or somehow it was transported here or something. Gold was not, yes, gold is not actually a natural mineral. That's, that I can tell you. It actually is from other places and hidden in the ground for reasons and purposes that were alien at the start. I do not wish to go into that conversation at this time, but that is correct. Is an element not a mineral? It is an element, but it is not a natural element to your planet. No, a mineral is um, uh, something like quartz. Uh, an element is something that is a basic structure of a uh, one singular atom, not a uh, a crystal Correct. made up of different... This was brought to your planet. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, any more questions? I don't have any on chat. Is there any in your room, Jim? Or Is there any more go? questions? <laughs> I, I, I have... Continue. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I don't usually ask a lot of questions, but when you come along, um, Nikolai, it's like... <laughs> yes. My channel's open. The Spirit Radio. What can you tell us about the Spirit Radio? Hmm. That you invented. Um, well, what do you want to know about it? Well, there's a lot of talk about that you invented a radio that you could actually commune to Spirit. It is an interdimensional device. It's not actually... It, they call it a spiritual radio, but it's actually interdimensional communication. Now, in order for you to have interdimensional communication, you have to be able to resonate with both Earth sources and uh, metaphysical sources. Now, the reason that there is... that the radio worked is because the source there I was working with an alternate source I was working with another being and this is the only way I, I was able to be successful there were some parts of this spirit radio that even I questioned when I was alive but it did work the radioactive energies within the radio were very small they were not a great amount of radiation, but radiation has a uh, has a half life, as you know, and so therefore the half life of the radiation is what brought elements from another area into existence in this area. Now, what was happening is the half life of this radiation was able to be manipulated. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I understand the the that half-lives aren't actually, as we are taught, correct. They correct. are intermittent. It could be manipulated it, to Sometimes the half-life can be very quick, and then it can be take a long time for the next radionuclei to, to well, we uh, would, leave, leave, leave the nucleus. Well, um, you re realize that the half-life is a release yeah. of matter from a radioactive object. You understand that? Yeah. Now, the radioactivity could be manipulated to be bring back things instead of having them just emit. I like that. So, therefore, it was a 
uh, manipulated to bring energy back from where it emitted f to. And radioactive energy emits into other dimensions. Brilliant. I, that, 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 that is something. I think some scientists are going to be going, oh my god, have we been getting it all wrong? Yes. I'd love, love to see that investigation. When, when you can manipulate the energy of radiation to come back and not just emit, then you have something different. And that so is only are you one talking like a containment type of thing? So you can yes, contain the radiation? It, it be a containment because at the moment as it's it very comes hard back. to contain a very fast moving um, small particulate. Well, uh, let me continue. Thanks. This can be, the radiation can be um, manipulated to stop emit, emitting as it brings things back. It can only do one thing at a time. It cannot emit and bring things back at a time. Uh -huh. So when things are coming back, then the emission shop stops. I'm going to have to review it. <laughs> you will not find anything on your planet that will agree with that. Well, I'm doing. I'm going to do a bit more research on it this year, anyway. So that's something I'm quite, quite um, excited by. So, Nikolai, thank you for your questions for me today. I don't yes. have any more. I don't know if anyone else in the room has any. I had else. one quick question. If you yes. are familiar with a gentleman named Nassim Harriman, and if you could speak to us of him, ah. what would you like to know? Um, I would like to know if he is on the right track as far as you know figuring out. Um, unified field. Yeah, theory. unified field theory. That's exactly what I wanted to say. Yes, the unified. He is on the right track. Yes, but I won't speak about that too much because I do not want to influence anyone in any way when dealing with that. I am not permitted to do so. Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate that makes, it. That makes sense as well because he does talk. He also um, talks a lot about um, black holes, but he talks about the a black hole being a W H O L E a black hole hole of everything. So he's yes. got some really interesting theories that it I is. really recommend if anybody yes. wants to get into a new science for this century and they want to be inventing or creating, go to Nassim's page and do his course. And it's and here's a question for you that I want you, your people to think about. What does a black hole actually do? If it only brings in matter, it, does that make sense to you? It does not make sense to me. It and therefore I understand why at this point. But your, your scientists are at a loss with what it does with the matter. And they must understand that the matter is creative. Yeah, you can't see my hand up, unfortunately. I was gonna, I was gonna answer the question. Um, for me, um, uh, a black hole is a is a super dense concentration of light. Yes. Very good. And what does light break into? Um, I recently discovered there's a trinity to it, but I know there's the consistency of a particle and a wave. Um, what, <laughs> what does light break into? Um, other yeah. colors? The, it, the, it breaks into everything. Frequency, yeah. yeah. Well, light is everything. It is matter, it's density, it's... It's, it becomes color, it becomes everything that you know as you live. It becomes sentient, it becomes many, many things. And so um, it is uh, the greatest of God's creations. Is this so the event horizon? The event horizon is where it goes in, yes. But where it comes out is also a sort of event horizon as well. <laughs> I can't wait to event. I can't wait to see those. I, I, that, that's something I am so looking for. Something we're inside. Yeah. Something we're inside a black hole right now. Mm. 
are we? Yeah. That I cannot tell you. Because I am not aware of where I am at this time. <laughs> well, you're in Rochester. I think you're in Rochester, New York, upon the planet Earth, so not too far oh, away from the planet Earth. Earth. I, I knew that that was it, but there are <laughs> things that I cannot say. Yeah, I can. I, I can. I can really, really understand that. Now, I must go for now. Who is coming after me? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> You have many requests. Yes, if you want to just take your time, Jim. And I just want to say thank you to the 50 listeners that are tuning in right now. And thank you so tune. much, Nikolai. We so you appreciate are welcome. your presence. I'm happy to be time. here. I just wanted to bring the warning about artificial black holes and vortexes because if they are not in natural creation, they can be very dangerous and harmful. That yeah. is my biggest message for you today. I was warned about that 10 years ago. Thank you. Yes. I will exit at this time. Blessings, Nicholas. Nicolai. Yes, blessings. Thank yeah. you. Namaste. I mean, I think I could spend another 10 hours with you. <laughs>